we're ready to go over this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into too much details on this. Um, I'm going to give you the basic outline and you can run with it from there. This has been done before. I did it way back in, I think 2017, um, on a Gen 3 platform in the Cutlass. If you want to check out that video, it's right here. Um, it's the same method as this that, that I was using here, except we're applying it to a Gen 5 platform. So, um, how this works is um, you're going to have your, your wideband hooked up, and you're going to need the uh, access to the output, uh, the analog output, which is the white wire on the AM um, wideband. You've got one analog output on the old style um, gauge, such as the 30 4110, like I'm using, or if you have the new, newer style that, uh, gauge, this is a 30300. I think that's the one everybody's that they've uh, updated it with, but uh, you're going to have a, a positive analog output, which is the white, and then a negative analog output, which is the brown. So you'll have two wires to deal with. Um, so really all we're doing is we're, di we're, we're disconnecting or deleting the fuel tank pressure sensor, which is located on top of the fuel tank, and using... Um, that input to the PCM to input our wideband data. And in order to do that, you're basically interrupting the, the blue and white wire, which will be where we'll inject our analog positive signal into the PCM, pin 9 on the X1 connector. There's the X1. That's the blue connector on the PCM. And if you have the two-wire uh, AEM wideband, you will connect your brown wire to pin 26, which is the ground. You won't worry anything about the yellow and red pin 3 on the fuel tank sensor. That's a 5-volt uh, signal. Do not do not hook up anything to that. This is what we're dealing with right here. Right here. This is, this, this is the connector that's connected to the fuel tank pressure sensor, which is located on top of the fuel tank hat. This is a picture of the, of the uh, top of the fuel tank with the bed removed. And you can see right here is the fuel tank pressure sensor. Right here is the connector for the um, fuel pump and the uh, level indicator. So don't worry about this one. This one has a locking tab. You can't unplug it anyway without uh, releasing the locking tab. This one, you can just reach in, hit this tab, and unplug it and pull the pigtail down in between the tank and the uh, drive shaft. You'll be able to inject your signal there. But uh, so yeah, we, we just we're we're, t we're getting rid of this sensor and injecting our data here. So I'm gonna put a little video at the end of this whole thing that uh, shows how I, you know, I was able to connect the wires here. That's one way of doing it. Or you can go up to the front of the vehicle, um, go into the physical connector that's connected in the PCM itself, and uh, get a couple of uh, pin pigtails and remove the one on pin nine fold it back, tape it off, and then inject, or, and then repin it with a pigtail, and then you'll have another wire coming out that'll run back to the white wire on the analog gauge. You follow me on that. When you see the videos at the end, it'll make more sense. But uh, that's basically it. I mean, that, that's, that's it. I mean, as far as the physical install, there's, it's one, maybe two wires hooked up, and the rest of it's just configuring HP tuners to, uh, to recognize the fuel tank pressure sensor as the wideband. And in order to do that, it's not hard. I'm not going to go over it. There's an excellent video by the late Ed Moten here. And he's using, uh, it's called Interfacing a Wideband HP Tuners version 3.0 standard MPVI. Um, he's actually using the um, AC uh, pressure port. And you can do that. If you're doing a Gen 5 uh, swap in an older vehicle, you're obviously not going to be using the AC pressure sensor. You can inject your signal right into that just like a you can with the fuel tank pressure sensor. Um, the most important things in the whole video is, uh, let's see, yeah, right here around 312, he gives you the, uh, the way of setting it up under your math parameters. So you'll go up here, you'll click on tools, that'll bring up, uh, and then you'll go down here to the math parameters, and you'll make up a new math parameter with this data in it, except the only difference will be, instead of AC, AC pressure sensor down here, you'll be using a fuel tank pressure uh, sensor. Same zero to five volt, just like the AC pressure sensor is, but you'll just be using that one. So you'll have whatever the uh, 
the code is for AC pressure sensor. After you hit new variable, you'll, uh, you know, he explains it in here. Just, just, uh, just replace a, a fuel, tech, fuel tank pressure sensor uh, where, where, he, where he says uh, AC pressure sensor. It's that simple. And just remember your offsets up here. Um, Kyle at Goat Rope Garage explains a little bit about this. Each uh, different wide band has a different offset. Most of the time mine was actually plus 10 here instead of plus 9.3. But I'm not going to go over that either. There's plenty of stuff on the HP Tuner forums on how to set up your offsets and all that. But that one is, is actually how to get the, the AFR in there. And then he's got one here that tells you how to do the, uh, the wide band error. So here's your commanded against your AC pressure or fuel tank pressure here. Um, he gives you the formula right here. Just get your reading glasses out and enter this, this formula right here. Very easy. He explains it in there. I'm not going to go over it. But that's basically it. I mean, it's super easy. I mean, um, probably one of the top five mods I've done to my truck. And the way I did mine was my, uh, my wideband gauge. I don't even have my wideband gauge mounted where you can see it. I literally bundled up the wires in the gauge and zip-tied it up under the dash. Because if I want to see what data is on my, my wideband, I'll just open up HP tuners and look at it or just look at it through the Torque app on my phone. Which is another thing. I'll make a little video. Uh, I'll append it to the end of this 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 one here, that shows you how to uh, set up the Torque app uh, to display the same data. If you have one of the OBD readers, the Bluetooth OBD readers, an Android phone, very nice, works extremely well. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention on uh, this deal here, um, the fuel tank pressure sensor. <coughs> excuse me. Obviously, you'll have to have it over here in your channels. So you'll have a uh, uh, fuel tank pressure sensor instead of AC pressure over here. But make sure you right click on it and update and increase the polling rate. The polling rate on the fuel tank pressure sensor defaults at like one time a second, which is entirely too slow if you're trying to read uh, AFR data. And if you put the, if you uh, set the polling data up to like 20 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds or whatever I have it set at, it's super fast. I mean, it's faster than serial. I mean, it's, it's just, this is just, you know, blink of an eye type stuff here. So that's it. I don't know what else to say. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll pin some stuff to the end of here that'll kind of make it make more sense. Um, like I said, you can use the AC pressure sensor. Um, there are some other sensors I thought you could use, but most of them, if you delete them and then try to re-inject this wideband stuff, it, it affects the operation of the engine so you don't you're very limited on on what you can what you can use but that AC pressure definitely I mean uh, fuel tank pressure definitely works I did a lot of research and if you totally delete it, it has no effect on the on the engine running whatsoever okay this is the first method it may be the easiest method for some people but what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach your hand up in here back towards the tank and you're gonna unplug the plug that's plugged into the tank pressure sender or sensor you don't have any uh, there's no locking mechanism or anything on this plug all you gotta do is reach up there and unplug it pull it back they give you plenty of uh, slack here to to attach your wire so then you're gonna take a piece of wire and you're gonna back probe it in the appropriate pin which is the blue with the white stripe wire I believe it, I think it was pin I don't know it's one over here on the far right and then you can fold it back tape it and then you'll run this wire the wire you just attached back to the cab to uh, the white wire on the AM wideband that simple and if you just and if you happen to have one of the uh, the newer widebands with the uh, with the ground also you'll have to uh, run two wires one will be the ground and one will be this white wire it's that simple so the only one you're not using is the 5 volt reference in this plug. I don't remember exactly which pin it is. But uh, yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and unhook mine and plug mine back in because I'm not using this method. And I'll show you how I did mine. Okay, method number two. And I think with some more elegant method, without having to kind of do kind of a hack job, which a hack job works just fine. But you're going to uh, repin your uh, X1 connector on your PCM for uh, just another wire. 
So you're gonna have to have another wire that has, it's terminated with the type of pin that's in this connector. And basically what you'll do is, uh, you know, take the cover off the PCM uh, connector, um, just like you do when you do like a e, uh, E85 uh, sensor install. Except this one, you're gonna remove the terminal that's in pin nine, which is the blue and white wire running back to the tank, fold it back, tape it off, insulate it, and then you'll just stick your new wire in and run it out. And this wire runs out and then runs back into the firewall through that boot over there. So that's method number two. I think that one kind of looks better and kind of makes more sense. And so you just leave the thing in the back plugged in and just uh, do that. Now, if you have the two pin or the uh, the uh, sensor with the uh, you know the white and the brown wire, the newer wide bands, you'll have to pin the ground wire also. And I'm not I don't remember exactly which pin it is, but it's nine and whatever that whatever that associated pin is. So you got the uh, the five volt, uh, the ground, and then you have the signal. So you you have the two wire wideband you'll be using the ground and the signal okay here's a little brief tutorial on how to get the uh, uh, this data moved over to the torque app so this is gonna work yeah okay you're gonna want to go to this website first that link so type that in then sorry then you go down and then that on that website in the folder called torque click on that and there's a, a file right here you want to click on that and download it download that those are your pids for the actual torque app all right now we want to go to our file manager go to files make sure you go up here to settings and you have it where it says show hidden files so a default is off. Make sure that is on. Now we want to go down here to internal storage. Go to download. And there's the file you just downloaded right there. So you'll click on that. You'll click on move to. You want to go to internal storage. And you want to look for the hidden folder called uh, .torque. Now, I've already clicked on it. I'm not exactly sure where it'll be, but you'll have to find it. Maybe it's in the torque, but there's one called dot torque. It's actually a hidden folder. That's why we had to uncheck or uh, allow it earlier. So click on that, and there's a folder called extended PIDs. So click on that, and that is exactly where you want to move the uh, file you just downloaded. So that's moved in there. Now you want to go to the torque app itself, open it up, Click on settings, come down here where it says manage extra PIDs, and actually my PIDs are in there already, but uh, go up here, the three dots, I'll click on those, and then it says add predefined list. Click on that, and lo and behold, there's your, whoop, got it again. But you'll have all these ones that come with the program, but then also you'll see in there, you'll have the ones you just downloaded. So you'll just, boom, click on click on it, and it'll populate um, the PIDs for the uh, uh, tank sensor wideband deal. And I threw one in there for ethanol content too. So, yeah, so you'll end up with something that looks like this. After you add the, uh, I'll show you how to add these. This is what you can, just some examples of what you can do. But in order to, to bring it up, you just simply hold it down. I know most people have probably already done this, but add display, digital display. And then in this list, you will have the PIDs that were just uh, downloaded and added. And there's two air fuel ratio stuff up here. This is the one that comes with torque. I don't use those. Here's the ones you just downloaded that I made right here. Um, air fuel ratio. There it is, just like that. Let's see if it comes on here. I had it running so it doesn't think it, uh, let's try redoing it here. OK, 
Come on. Alright, there it is. And there it is. We're super lean because we hadn't even started the truck today. <laughs> that's a heck of a wideband error. We're super lean, right? But uh, that's it. I mean, here's this is the data coming from the wideband. And this is your commanded coming from the PCM itself. And this is your error. We've got 1,100% error right now. <laughs> truck hadn't been started today. That's it. That easy.